You know, it's not unlikely that anti-Semitism is rising in the world, and the whole world, which seems to be dominated by the uh, Muslim uh, propaganda machine, is pressuring Israel uh, for a so-called ceasefire. But the Israelis are overwhelmingly believe that this war is justified because Hamas wants to destroy Israel. That's right. A former Israeli ambassador to the U.S. says Americans need to understand what Hamas is really all about. We have two stories from CBN News, beginning with Chris Mitchell in Jerusalem. Israel continued its military campaign to stop Hamas from firing rockets and eradicate a maze of terror tunnels. Terrorists infiltrated into Israel six times through those tunnels in the last two weeks. The activities on the ground are continuing to sever those tunnels that are planned and uh, operational in order to uh, infiltrate Israel. We are destroying them. We have destroyed approximately 60% of what we've found. The Army's campaign goes on against a backdrop of widespread backing at home. Israelis and Israel's security cabinet overwhelmingly support the war. One survey found that more than 90% of Israelis believe the war is justified. And Israel's security cabinet, made up of members across Israel's political spectrum, keep voting to expand the military campaign and gain a decisive victory over Hamas. In Gaza, Hamas remained defiant. Mohammed Deif, the head of Hamas's military, said the steadfastness of the Palestinian people is what will bring victory on the battlefield. The enemy is sending its soldiers to certain disaster. Former Israeli ambassador to the U.S. Michael Oren says he believes people in the U.S. need to know the true nature of Hamas. They have to be reminded that Hamas, in terms of its ideology and its theology, is no different than Al-Qaeda. It's no different than ISIS or the Nusra Front. Um, these are all um, radical Islamic uh, you know, groups that seek to create a, a unified caliphate. To, uh, to rid the Middle East of Christians and of Jews. Um, Christians have suffered terribly in the Middle East mm -hmm. from these organizations. Oren told CBN News the fight Israel is in is the same fight facing the U.S. The fight, what's going on in Gaza, basically an hour and a half drive south of here, Chris, is the fight for, for our civilization, not just for Israel. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. This is George Thomas in Gaza, where Hamas's military chief says his fighters are eager for death and vowed to keep fighting until the seven-year blockade of the Strip was lifted. This as Israel's sea, land and air offensive continues to strike at key Hamas control centers, including a hit on Gaza's only power plant, leaving most of the city without electricity. Meanwhile, in some of the hardest hit areas of the city... I can still smell her. This is her blood so close. This is a piece of her burnt hair. Gazans are struggling to cope with the devastation. Three days after an Israeli airstrike killed his 60-year-old mother and destroyed their home, Antoine Ayad is back home to what's left of it, searching through rubble, trying to salvage what he can. On Sunday, my mother became the first Christian killed in the Gaza war. Ayad says his mother was on her way to church carrying this cross in her hand when a missile struck their house. The wall collapsed on her body right over there and severed her legs. In this corner, my brother was severely injured and my father was on the roof, but thank God he survived. Antoine told CBN News he's not quite sure why the Israelis targeted his home, but the suspicions are that there was a senior Hamas leader in the neighborhood. Antoine wouldn't confirm nor deny this possibility on camera, but off camera, he told CBN News that he's concerned about the direction of his tiny city on the Mediterranean that once was home to a thriving Christian community. Now less than 2,000 Christians live on the Strip. The majority are Sunni Muslims. For now, though, the skies over Gaza City are once again filled with smoke as Israel intensifies its offensive here in the Palestinian territory. George Thomas, CBN News, Gaza. Uh, here's a quote from some of the jihadis. Uh, that this is, I think, Hamas and uh, the Mother and Brotherhood. Uh, here's what it says. We are not afraid of death, but we desire it. How wonderful death is. Let us die in redemption for Muslims. Jihad is our course of action, and death in the cause of Allah our most 
precious wish. Now, that's what they say. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we did a piece of that. You know, I, I went to Yale Law School, and they just sent out something from Yale Law School as a, a, a message given or a lecture given by some uh, Arab apologist that uh, had all these things in it that was exactly contrary to the truth. And uh, they were mailing it out to say, we want you to read this. This is just one point of view. But in any event, here's a point of view. <clears throat> this is a book called Islam, Religion of Peace or War. It's beautifully done. It has many quotes from the Quran, many quotes from the Hadith, uh, excellent discussion of uh, Muslim history from those who are experts, they're Arabists, those who speak the language fluently and who've studied the Quran. This is something that I think you ought to have. It's called Islam, Religion of Peace of War. We'll send it to you free if you want it. Some of you might want extra copies for your church or your uh, study group. It's 1-800-759-0700. You can call in. Uh, or you can download the Islam booklet at CBN.com. The whole thing's there. But, Pat, when yes. you're fighting an enemy that doesn't value life at all, in fact, yeah. wants death, yeah. it's, not, it's not a fair fight. Of course not. Of course it isn't. Of course it's it isn't. amazing. And, um, you know, we're not used to people like that. I mean, the, in <clears throat> the old days, you know, you, you fought, armies fought, and, the, and there was respect for life and, the, you know, Geneva Convention and all this. There is no Geneva Convention with these people. Right. They want to die. Mm. And, all right, get this, read it, be informed. One more time, the ad address is cbn.com, or you can call in and we'll send it to you. 1-800-759-0700. Well, here at home, one political party is making a great deal of money from the talk that the Democrats might want to, uh, excuse me, the Republicans may want to impeach the president. But it's not the Republicans who want to do it. John Jessup has that story from Washington. Here's John. Pat, congressional Democrats raised a million dollars on Monday alone as they cash in on the chatter that Republicans are planning to impeach President Obama. But Republican leaders say that talk is nonsense. Morning, House Speaker John Boehner called the Democrats' fundraising efforts a scam. The impeachment drive is one of the latest fronts in this midterm election year as Democrats are trying to stage a long shot attempt at taking back the House of Representatives from the Republicans. Well, the U.S. and Europe will be looking to see what impact the latest round of sanctions will have on Russia concerning its involvement in Ukraine. The new measures target Russia's banks along with military and energy sectors and are designed to hurt the economy but no one is sure if they will cause President Vladimir Putin to soften his support for pro-Russian rebels in Ukraine. Well, Christians are outraged over a new cable show about Jesus. It debuts next week on the Cartoon Network and contains profanity, violence, and raunchy adult humor. But critics say it's not funny, just foul and offensive. After the smashing box office success of faith-based films like Son of God, Come with me. What are we gonna do? change the world. The Cartoon Network's Adult Swim brings a very different take on the life of Christ to the small screen. What is it with that guy? Wow, somebody got love for their Lord and Savior. Ooh. Baby, that's Jesus. The new series called Black Jesus from the creator of the Boondocks depicts Jesus in not so holy situations, using profanity, smoking pot, and drinking alcohol. It premieres next week, but the calls for a boycott have already begun. Among them, Bishop Harry Jackson. After viewing the trailer, he told CBN News shows like Black Jesus play on stereotypes while aiming to chip away society's respect for Christians and their biblically held beliefs. I do think if whoever we are, if we ourselves are black or Asian or white, Hispanic, and we let this go on, we're going to see worse and worse depictions of Jesus. And oh, by the way, they're going to make fun of our faith. Some have criticized the boycott, suggesting the uproar of a show about a Jesus who's black is based on racism. But Tim Graham, who monitors bias in the media, says the outrage isn't about the color of Jesus' skin, 
rather what he describes as the media's long record of mocking the Christian faith. There is nothing objectionable about the color of Jesus when you love Jesus, you know, and there's nothing wrong with Jesus coming to an inner city neighborhood in Los Angeles, but that's of course not the way the media is going to try to portray it. And let's be straight, Hollywood's in no way interested in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. We asked for comment from Adult Swim's parent company, The Turner Network. It provided CBN News with this statement saying, Black Jesus is a satire, and one interpretation of the message of Jesus played out in modern day morality tales. And despite what some may consider a controversial depiction of Jesus, it is not the intent to offend any race or people of faith. Graham points out protests of other shows he calls anti-Christian, like Adult Swim's Moral Oral, force them to take an early final bow. Jackson believes Christians should also focus on getting in on the game themselves to get the last laugh. We as believers have got to use our craft to tell our stories. What we really need to do as a community is take this opportunity for this culture war and for us to engage with fire fighting fire, meaning creative media coming against their creative media, our truth coming against their absence of truth. And in this case, challenging the notion of what's humorous against what's holy. If you want to make your voices heard, we have the contact information for Adult Swim's parent company, Turner Broadcasting, on your screen there. You can write, tweet, or call to let them know what you think about the show. You can also find these addresses on CBNNews.com. Pat? Well, Ted Turner is a former friend and, uh, and a competitor of mine. I, I know about him for years and years and years. But he's the one who said Christians are losers. and. Uh, I don't know if he has anything to do anymore with Turner Broadcasting. It's owned by Time Warner. But nevertheless, uh, if this kind of thing had been done to portray Muslim, I mean, Muhammad, as a beer drinking, cursing, uh, roustabout, the outrage in the Muslim community would have torn nations apart. It would have resulted in the killings and bombings of thousands of people. You can't imagine just one cartoon showing Muhammad with a turban and some bombs coming out of it was enough to set off a, a firestorm in the Netherlands. And, uh, you know, but we as Christians just say, oh, well, we'll just take it and, and roll with it. I'm not sure we need to do that. I think it's time that we say, look, uh, you guys at Time Water, Time Water is getting ready to get bought by Rupert Murdoch. At least he's making a play for him. I think they're overpaying, but nevertheless, that's what we're talking about. Uh, it'll be about $100 a share, which will value that company at 80 to $90 billion, and he's got to borrow a lot of money to, to do the deal. <clears throat> but I, I don't think Turner uh, and, and Time Warner is worth it, but um, that's, that's his decision. John. Pat Soda Pop is losing its fizz with the public. 63% of Americans say they're trying to avoid soda in a new Gallup poll, and more than 9 out of 10 say they're trying to include fruits and vegetables in their diet. And a new study says that drinking beverages sweetened with high fructose corn syrup or sucrose can be bad for teenagers' memory. Rats were used in the study, and researchers found the drinks didn't hurt the memories of adult rats, but they did impair the memory abilities of adolescent rats. So daily soft drinks with those sweeteners could make it harder for teenagers to learn in school. Pat, you're one of the healthiest guys I know. No soda for you, right? I don't like that stuff. Every so often I drink a Coke just because I, you know, I'm thirsty. But uh, it, that high fructose corn syrup is, is the pits. Mm -hmm. Because I am not an adult rat and you are not a teenage <laughs> rat. Well, you know, if you don't drink a soda for a while yeah. and then you have one, it just doesn't even taste right That's to right. you, you know. But I'm like you. I have a Coke once in a while. But you used to have, like, a Coke every day. But then you, that is no good. So you know, now just once in a blue moon. People think diet uh, Cokes with the diet things that NutraSweet and it it, uh, it leads to, to weight gain. So it's, it's. Oh, yeah. But the high fructose corn syrup, people are saying, oh, no, it's just one more type of corn and one more <laughs> type of sugar. And it's not anything different. It is different. It's got a chemical make, make it's different. And it's in everything, everything. It's in cereal and it's in soft drinks and it's in sweeteners and barbecue sauce. You name it, it's in stuff. Yeah. And uh, it's not good for you. But this is saying that it, it impairs the memory of 
teenagers, youngsters. The good news is people are getting it. They're yeah, getting they, healthier. They, and, and they're mm -hmm. eating fruits and vegetables. I'm sure you do that. That's why you're so healthy. I had my green drink this morning. I'm, oh. I keep promising to bring you in. That I'm going to do it. Uh, well, Hear I'm, me now. Believe me later. I'm, I'm going to do I'm, it. I'm not sure if you want me to drink it on the air. Well, on the air. <laughs> My shake was delicious. I I'm, hope you agree. I'm so confident that you're yeah, going right. to like it. We'll do it on the air. All right. All right. Two North Carolina based missionary groups are pulling their non essential staff out of Liberia in response to the Ebola crisis. SIM and Samaritan's Purse run the only Ebola treatment center in the West African nation, but they're pulling many of their people out in response to a sharp rise in cases. As CBN News reported earlier, Samaritan's Purse doctor and a missionary nurse contracted the disease and are in isolation. The virus has killed more than 670 people across West Africa this year. There's an ongoing battle to remove God from the public square, including removing in God we trust as the official motto of the U.S. The Congressional National Prayer Caucus Foundation is working to counter that trend. Today, it's hosting a social media shout out, calling on all people to post in God we trust on social media and on the foundation's webpage in GodWeTrust.com. Most people don't know, but there's a hundred members of Congress in a Congressional Prayer Caucus, and their goal is to pr protect our religious freedom, preserve Judeo-Christian heritage, and ensure that prayer continues to have a place in America and that God continues to have His place in America. You can find out more about this story and always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website, cbnnews.com.